Hello, this is Brother Kevin, and uh, this is a uh, Thanksgiving morning, and uh, while I'm not uh, sharing a Thanksgiving message, I do want to say um, Happy Thanksgiving to all of my friends and family uh, all over Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, whatever. I just want to say um, a Happy Thanksgiving and enjoy your families. Um, I did want to bring a special message because it's it's come to me that we all come from different camps, uh, inside or outside of Christendom. I can speak more of Christendom simply because that's the way I was raised. I was raised in a Baptist tradition and um, and a Black Baptist, more of a Southern Baptist type of tradition, and uh, certain things go with that, of course. And um, I wanted to share something that I believe is very vital. You know, some people say, you know. Uh, you can't really be saved in a in a liturgical church situation where you go into the rituals and then somebody will say you know you can't be saved by uh, going into a uh, saying a sinner's prayer and then some people say you can't be saved by praying through on an altar and uh, people always tell you you know what's the right way well, I've been around for a little while, and I've come to a conclusion that, you know, Christianity can look like a lot of different things to many people, but when you get right down to it, this is where the axe hits the root of the trees. If your Christianity equals what we saw the disciples do in those Gospels, you forsake all and follow Jesus. Then I'm not going to worry about whether you attend a liturgical church or a full gospel church or whether you pray the sinner's prayer or whether you pray through on the altar. No, I don't care. I don't think God does either. If you'll follow Jesus wherever he leads, if you'll do whatever he says, if you're no longer in charge of your life, but he is the one in charge, and he's the reason you move and live and have your being, and you're totally in surrender to him, I will not be your judge. I can't be. And I want to say to those of you who have your systems of belief, I'm not here really to refute all of that. As long as it equals certain things. If there's transformation in your life and you're no longer serving sin, but you're serving righteousness in Christ Jesus as it comes directly from Jesus himself, that's all I care in the end and that's all that God cares in the end. Anything else is just cultural to me. You know, a lot of people say, you know, sinners prayers of faith, they don't work. Well, I wouldn't say that, I'd say this. Sinners' prayers don't work maybe as they once did because hearts are not prepared anymore. Now, in our holiness Methodists, old timers, hearts weren't prepared either, but they did the work at the altar. So when the Holy Spirit came, you had people dedicated. They were altar workers and they prayed with you and they worked with you and they walked through you with the scriptures and they wept with you and they brought you through so that the heart preparation could be totally prepared and that work could totally be done and then the person could receive the new birth. But to say a person cannot be saved by praying a sinner's prayer it wouldn't be totally accurate because it depends where a person's heart is. If a person's heart is ready at that time, then you all they needed. I, a very good friend of mine that used to be my pastor, in many ways I consider him still to be my pastor, he once said to me, concerning his conversion, that he woke up one day under such conviction and said, he cried out to God, Lord, if you'll just send somebody my way that will show me how to be a Christian, I'll be a Christian. Please, Lord. I said, now, let me tell you something. He was ready. So he prayed the prayer, and he was ready. It didn't matter. And, and, and what I'm saying to you is this. I'm not interested, and I hope you're not, in systems. Well, I'm of a Catholic uh, 
descent. I'm of a Episcopalian. I'm of a Baptist. I'm of a Methodist. I'm of a Pentecostal. I'm holiness, or I'm you know charismatic, or whatever it is. I'm not interested in the style or the culture. Only the results. If Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, that's who you follow. You will forsake all and follow him. That's all. Now, people say, you know, I got it. I fell out under the power. I've experienced that. It's real. Okay. But I don't care how much you fall out of, out, out of, the, out of the spirit. If you get up and you're still in charge of your life, I doubt if you're a Christian. I'm saying to you that being a Christian is supernatural. It's not human effort. When you come to a saving knowledge of who Jesus is, your heart has been prepared by him. Jesus said, no one comes to me except the Father that sent me draw him. So it's a work of God to even become a Christian. You can't just intellectually decide, oh, this looks like something nice to do. I think I'll be a Christian. It never works like that. It is an act of God upon the human heart, bringing that heart to the knowledge that he could never bring himself to. And bringing that individual to a place of his need, his desperate need for God. And I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of us think we're saved when we're not because we've never been lost. The thing that God had to do for me in my life, because I was raised in a Christian home and I had pretty good Christian morals. God had to convince me I was lost first because I didn't cuss, I didn't drink, I was a virgin, and I was good to my parents. I was a really good kid in a natural sense. So what God had to do was to unpack my heart and show me in other ways what a sinner I was. He had to show me I was a liar, he had to show me I was an egomaniac, he had to show me I was a manipulator, and he had to unpack other things, but he had to still convince me that I was a sinner. Because when I looked at my outward life to men, it looked pretty good. So God had to unpack my soul and show me that even though I had this outward, you know, churchanity or this outward religion, I did not really, I did not really have Christ and I really wasn't born again. And it packed with it such terror and such conviction that I wasn't even in the church. I gave my life to Christ on my bunk bed in my mother's house in my bedroom, in my bedroom that me and my brother Kelly shared. So I just want you to know that you need to be lost before you get saved. How can you be saved if you're not lost? And you're certainly not going to add Jesus. You know, oh, my life's a mess. You know, I think I need to add religion to it. Maybe it's religion's what I'm looking for. You know, I'm going to add, you know, Jesus to my life and. And, 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 you know, I think my life would be better. <laughs> Don't try it. You're not going to add the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to anything. He's God. You're not going to fit him into your schedule. And he's not going to make your life perfect. First of all, you give your life to him, he's going to have your life. You're the one that's going to lay your life down. You're the one that's going to give it all to him. Because he's the one and the only one that can take away sins, blot out your transgressions, and give you a born-again new life that you've never had before. This is the gospel. This is the word of God. Hear me and understand. Jesus is calling you. But if he's calling you, you're going to come to Christ on his terms, not on yours. So you're not going to add a little Jesus to your life and be a Christian and get saved. You're going to surrender your life, trust him fully, and allow him to do that miracle work of the new birth after he has forgiven your sins. He brings you to that place of your need. He shows you that you really need him, and he shows you that he's the only way you can be saved. And yes, he shows you that he loves you, but you got to do it on his terms. His terms is the cross. The cross first, the resurrection second. The ending of your life as you know it the beginning of the new life in Christ Jesus. Hence, we get the term born again, or another term, regeneration, or another term, born of above. These are all terms that mean the same thing. 
but they are supernatural. As Ezekiel 36 says, a new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will place within you. I'll take away the stony heart of your flesh, give your heart of flesh, and I'll put my Holy Spirit in, inside of you and you will keep my commandments and judgments to do them. Well, anyway, I sure hope that you enjoy this message. It's just a short, independent message. And I want to say happy Thanksgiving to all of my friends and family and tell somebody about Jesus today. Tell somebody how good he is. All right, God bless you, and I'll see you in another video. Bye-bye.